Hello Pipe community, Bear Pipe here. A few days ago a package arrived in the mail and it was addressed to Mr. Bear, which caused quite a bit of laughter at the post office. But I knew exactly who it was from. It was from Pipe Tree. And Pipe Tree is a YTPC member who is, is relatively recent to YouTube, but he's got quite a few videos up already and he's got quite a decent following already. And uh, he contacted me a few weeks ago and told me that he was going to send me a little something. I was quite excited because I didn't know what it was going to be, but I wasn't expecting anything big or amazing. And I have to admit, he blew me away because what he sent me is quite exceptional. But before I show you what he sent me, let me just tell you a little bit about Pipe Tree and, and give him a bit of a shout out because you should go and check out his channel if you haven't done so already. And I'm going to put a link down below. So if you haven't checked it out, you can just click on the link and go to his channel directly. He's from the UK. Uh, he does conversations from his uh, sitting room uh, about life, about pipes, about things in general. It's quite entertaining. He's got a great dry sense of humor. And it's well worth checking out. So please go and check him out. Go and see what he's about. And if you like what he's doing, please follow him. But let me show you what he's done. So with the, with the package, there was a little letter that came with it. And it says, Dear Bear, I've sent you a few estate pipes I thought that you may enjoy. None of the pipes have been cleaned as you seem to enjoy that process. And Pipe Tree, you're absolutely right. I do enjoy that process. And this is what he sent me. Four pipes and not just any pipes. And I'm going to show these to you in a little more detail and a little more closely. So let's run through them and let me show you what Pipe Tree has sent me. Okay, let's go through what Pipe Tree has sent me. The first pipe is this very interesting pipe that my daughter said Radagast from uh, the Hobbit would probably smoke because it looks like a wizard's pipe. I don't know how old this is. It has French stamping on the side here, basically just saying that this is briar. This looks like it could be bone or antler of some sorts. And I don't know what this, the, the mouthpiece is. It could be plastic. Um, I'm not sure yet. I haven't managed to open this up. It's all a screw together thing. So you got these um, metal elements in between. It's quite a complicated pipe. I think this is probably not a smoker. I think this is a decorative pipe and I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to make it pretty and I'm going to use it as a decorative piece because I don't think this is the kind of pipe that one smokes. Not sure about that, but okay. So this is the first pipe and it only keeps, keeps, keeps getting more and more interesting. This is the second pipe he sent me. This is a GBD new era. This is a post uh, consolidation pipe. So made after 1981, no idea when after 81 it was done. The shape is, it's either a B or an E199, but I'm not quite sure. It's a lovely little apple uh, with a fairly nice cross grain on the bottom, some bird's eye on one side and some more straight grain on the other side. The stem is quite oxidized, but it's in good shape. It's almost no teeth marks on it at all. You can see somebody at some point try to, to clean it up a bit and may have kind of scratched it up a bit. So a little bit of sanding will clean that up and, and take that out. Otherwise, the pipe's in great condition. Tiny bit of a nick here on the on the rim that can be patched up. And uh, this should make an interesting video just in terms of um, talking about how you do a patch that is made to blend in with the pipe as opposed to the contrast stuff that I've been doing until now. So there would be useful contents from this video. And then it gets even more interesting. This pipe when I picked it out, I immediately thought, oh, this has got to be a French pipe. It's got to be something like a Rob or something with the leather cladding on it or, uh, and I was wrong because it's not because it says on the side here, very faintly made in Tanganyika. And on this side, it says Kudu 
and this is shape 45. Now, if you know your African history, you know that Tanganyika was a very short-lived name for Tanzania, or Tanzania is the way that they say it in Africa. Tanzania was a uh, British colony. It was part of the, the East African, Central East African colonial empire, it sits just south of Kenya, and it became independent in 1961. They used the name Tanganyika for about four years until 1964. So this pipe was made somewhere between 61 and 64 in Africa. And that's kind of special for me because I am from Africa. So I feel a sense of connection with this pipe already. Now, this is going to be an interesting opportunity to, uh, to do a video about restoring leather. On pipes and this leather is in quite good shape so um, it would be quite an interesting video to do. Uh, I've never done it before so I'm looking forward to going through cleaning and restoring this leather. So that's an interesting pipe. But then at the bottom of the box that he sent me there was this little blue container it looked like this and inside that there was something very special. This was in there. And what this is, is a pipe shape that's not being made anymore. It's a shape 85 Stanwall. You do get a shape 85 today, but it looks totally different from this. It's a relatively standard looking bent billiard. This is the original shape 85. And this was, you guessed it, designed by Sexton Eversen. And this is a pipe shape that I have been looking to buy for a couple of years now. And there has been a couple of opportunities to buy one. Uh, there's a couple of times on eBay that I've bid on one that I didn't get it. There has been the odd one of these that's made its way through smokingpipes.com and the estate pipes, but never in a condition or with a grain that I felt was worth jumping on. The one that Pipe Tree sent me is perfect. And here's why. It has this beautiful cross grain that sits here with a bird's eye on one side and a bird's eye on the other side. And remember, these pipes were machine made. They, the original shape was designed by Sixton, but then they basically used that original shape that he did as a, as a template to mass produce these pipes in the factory. So to get one with a beautiful response to the grain is not a given because most of them, they didn't do that. So you're kind of lucky when you get that in one of these pipes. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this pipe, which I've never seen on a stand wall before, is that it has a stinger. So that's quite interesting. I'm going to do some research on that because I've never seen that in a stand wall before. So um, I didn't know that they did stingers at any time in their pipes. This is a registration era. So the perfect time for a collectible Stanwall. Um, so somewhere between 1948 and 1970, this was done. Pipes in great condition. It's just very oxidized. Uh, the stain is quite worn off. So I'm going to have to restain it. Seems to have been red at one point because there it's red, but up down here, it's almost like a bright yellow. And then there's a little bit of chatter along the rim that can easily be steamed out and cleaned up. So this is going to be a great project. This is a keeper. This is a pipe that uh, I am going to treasure. So Pipe Tree, thank you so much. I will never forget you just because of this pipe, because this is quite special. And uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to say Thank you again to Pipe Tree for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm quite touched by the generosity that you've shown me. So until next time, thanks for watching.